we'll just nice. dump, dump them randomly into four. Lovely. Um, Sarah and Vicky, do I need to upgrade you to facilitator or are you already upgraded? It looks Hello. like you're already Can upgraded. You me, Hal? Yeah, I am. I Great. have no idea, if I'm honest. Vicky, well, I am. Like, you looks like you are, Vicky. Am I? Let me just okay, what do I need to do? Will I be in one of those um, sessions that, well, obviously I'll be in a breakout session, but do you need me to do anything in the session or? No. Because you're a moderator also, Vicky, sorry to interrupt, I cut across you then, Sarah, you won't automatically be put into the classroom because you're a moderator, but because you've got moderation, we'll talk you through, you can just you can just go to the top of the menu and say, I'm going to join this room, so I'll talk you through that as the time comes. Right, okay, brilliant, thank you. Can I just check, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes, we can. Oh, fab. Yeah, no. We were just ignoring Sorry. you. That was uh, oh, <laughs> I thought that Sorry, was going on. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just, just going to say that I've upgraded you all to moderators. Oh, well done, Fee. Okay, uh, and the uh, session has started recording already. Oh, well then, see, my job is done for me. Good day. Uh, How it many on the session do we know so that I can know when to start introducing you? Um, I think the bookings were something like 33. So if you cut that off of that, it's about 30. But I I think we're running quite short on delegates um, okay. overall. So I guess that we might have maybe 20. Okay. I'll play it by you then. Yeah. Vicky, on the top, on your black bar, you should yeah. have um, something that says participants and there's eight now. Can yeah, you see that? Got it. Yeah, yeah there got you it. Go. That, that'll tell you who's in the room. Brilliant, lovely, thanks. So Helen, I'm going to get rid of the participants and the playlist and leave those in your capable hands and I can just keep an eye on the chat bar for myself then. So do you want me to move? So I'll put the play, um, I'll put the presentation on when you're ready. Who's doing the presentation? It's Vicky, isn't it? Uh, Vicky is it yourself? Yeah, no, I'll move the slides on during the presentation. Really perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Fab, thanks. Vicky, <laughs> oh, Vicky, should I say you? No, Vicky, no Vicky, I didn't wait to start. <laughs> <laughs> behave now, Sarah, behave. Oh. <laughs> It's so fun to be back with my workforce crew. <laughs> Missed you. <laughs> okay, so I'll leave the uh, slides get moved on by yourselves then, and I'll just then do the breakout rooms when you're ready. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Claire. Who said that? I did, Helen. <laughs> I'm hidden. Hello. Hiya. 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 Really enjoying. Are you liking that at the um, program? I really am. And I'm loving the platform. Yay. That's working really well. And you can see what the options are now for you in January also, Claire, after today. Like your hair, Sarah. <gasps> well, can I tell you a story? My husband cut this with his beard trimmers. <laughs> we did a good no job. Way. He did okay, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I was he quite proud of that. And he managed like this not only with beard trimmers, but also with me complaining and whinging throughout. <laughs> <laughs> During lockdown, my mum asked my dad to cut the back of her hair. <laughs> How did it go? He was so scared he couldn't stop his hand from shaking. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> It's the only bit you couldn't reach. <laughs> I was doing quite a lot of complaining about, make sure it's straight, make sure it's straight. And he was saying, but do you want me to go and get the spirit level from the shed? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yes, I almost do. <laughs> it looks very glamorous. Oh, bless him. It Actually, it's had some compliments today. So I am going to pass all of those on to him because he was feeling very anxious about it. <laughs> How's the post horse injuries? The what now? You know, the, the you fell off your horse. Oh my goodness, you've got a good memory. That was um, about two years ago now, I, and actually, I still can't lift my left leg properly. But you know, uh, how about your injury? You said you just put a, put a shoe back on today for the first time in a while. Oh gosh, I just I stubbed my baby toe, and I've broken it. Oh no. 
But uh, yeah, it's been a week before I could put a shoe on. Oh, bless your heart. So I'm really pleased about that. Are you walking around the house now in high heels, Claire? <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> I'm in Tidaski today, bless. Nice. Sarah, well, keep my distance from Sarah, out of the way, actually. Yeah, I haven't seen much of you. So is it no. because you're out of the house or bliss because, why is it bliss? It's so bliss because I'm out of the house. I'm seeing um, amazing colleagues. I'm in a lovely environment. Yeah, and we've had coffee off the coffee man. See some new people for the first time in however many days. Indeed. Yeah. And in 3D. Yes. <laughs> Right, we're at two o'clock, but we've got 15, so we'll, do you want to give it a little? Yeah, let's give it a minute, minute, yeah. minute and then we'll, yeah. we'll kick off. People can filter in. Whenever they arrive, it's fine by me. Okay. I might have to go on mute. We've got a skip being delivered. That sounds exciting. Keep it away from your toes, Claire. <laughs> Got another one. Oh, <laughs> who is that? Love it. I like the red one. <laughs> this is like your range this is like your range of clinic lipsticks claire it is and i was thinking because i haven't been to the beauty salon for a while i'm definitely like the red pair <laughs> 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 yeah i know that feeling <laughs> So, Vicky, I'd say if you're happy, we'll just, you know, start things off and make our way through the session. And if more people join us, then the more the merrier. No problem. OK. Right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, and an afternoon. I think we've enjoyed this session so far. It's been, like I said, it's been a, a brand new one. And I think we've all um, certainly from feedback, we're all enjoying it. So, um I, for those who don't know me, I'm Vicky Harris, Workforce Business Partner, and I'm really pleased to be able to uh, introduce my fellow committee member and colleague, Sarah Patmore. Um, so she's a programme lead from Improvement Cymru and has got a vast amount of experience in OD and workforce. And, um, and you're working at the moment, like I said, holistically in partnership with sort of service improvement, patient experience, communication colleagues. And has got, I could listen to Sarah all day. I don't know, so the way that you deliver is brilliant. So you can't let me down today now, Sarah. She's amazing. So this afternoon's session is um, entitled Kiss in the New Normal. So it's going to be an interactive, uh, reflective session. So exploring what KISS, so that's KIP. Keep, improve, start and stop um, as a result of our COVID uh, era learning. So we're just going to capture in learning and creating a bank of ideas for sharing for implementation. So um, we've got the chat bar on the side. So if you've got any questions as you're going through, it'd be great if you could just pop them in there and then we can visit them at the end then. Um, and I hope you enjoy the session. I'll hand you over to Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. And how I can't tell you how exciting it is to be back with workforce colleagues. So for people who don't know, I worked for 20 odd years in NHS Wales, workforce and OD, predominantly in OD. Um, and just recently, earlier this year, just before COVID, I made a career change and I moved into quality improvement. And I now work for Improvement Cymru, who are hosted by Public Health Wales. And my portfolio of responsibility is I'm programme lead for cancer and maternity. So I have had a little bit of a career swivel, but it is absolutely delicious to be back with you all. And thank you so much for joining in this workshop. Um, I've deliberately given this a bit of a sexy title to try and entice you in. And I am also conscious, so just to be super clear, we're not actually going to be kissing anybody, which is good. Um, but I, and, and I am also conscious that the term the new normal is fine for some people and for other people, it kind of gets the hairs on the back of your neck up and people don't like that phrase. But can I invite you to just live with it for a slide or two and then we'll kind of let that go. 
but I hope it is um, it translates and we understand what one another are talking about. Um, please put questions in the chat bar. Um, also, pop your hand up. I'm happy to stop as we go along and have a chat about something. And during the session, there's going to be a specific place where um, you are going to break out into some discussion groups with a particular task. Um, so if that's OK, we will get going. So, so a first question, if I can invite you to use the chat bar here, really, when, when we're thinking about the new normal, there, a chat bar to just put any observations or thoughts in, when we're thinking about the new normal, um, there's good stuff and bad stuff. And I don't want to use this session to dwell on the bad stuff. We, we can all list plenty of things about this COVID experience that we're finding really tough and really disappointing. And this session really isn't about dwelling on those. Equally, I don't want to not recognise that many of us have more negative or difficult feelings about aspects of our experience. And I've deliberately chosen this image of a COVID experience um, Christmas bauble, because at the moment, actually for quite a lot of people, particularly people with younger kids, um, the, the potential cancellation of Christmas is, is actually quite a big deal. And for anybody who was in Rachel's session this morning, um, Dr. Rachel, not Rachel Gidman, um, she was talking about how when she prepped her session and she put up a little slide, or she was prepping a slide that had an image on that said Christmas is cancelled, and her eight-year-old looked over her shoulder and saw it and got anxious about, is it, is it, is, is it actually cancelled? It's not, is it, mummy? So actually things, things that perhaps matter to us, are they becoming more important or less important? And I don't want to overlap with the positive psychology that Rachel talked about earlier and is going to be part of our final session. I really do want to focus this session on what does this stuff mean for us as workforce and OD practitioners? Ooh, look, I'm doing traditional PowerPoint moving and it doesn't work on here. There we go. And the inspiration for this session was this article in The Guardian. So I don't know if anybody else saw this, um, but the particular angle on this that I was interested in was, OK, so, you know, what do they mean if we're dreading a dark winter lockdown? And actually, this was published in September, which was before our current arrangements. Obviously, the clocks have now changed and the things do feel like a little bit different. So I don't know if anybody is Norwegian in, in this session or has a lot of experience with Norwegians, married to one or dating one. That, but what is it then about Norwegians? What was this, this article trying to get at? Um, and essentially, um, there's a town in Norway. So this whole article, it was written about a town in Norway called Tromsø, um, which is 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle. And because of its geographical location, it gets no sun from mid-November to mid-January. Let me just repeat that. It gets no sun from mid-November to mid-January. It's a long time without sun. And then the deepest, darkest bit of that, it, it gets some reflective sun for a couple of hours per day. Um, but essentially, it's largely in darkness from mid-November to mid-January. And everybody in the group here will have heard of seasonal affective disorder and the fact that during the winter months, actually, things are a little bit more difficult. So or oh, many people find things a little bit more difficult during the winter months. So this, this um, article was sort of framing this and exploring some research around, because what this town of Tromsø in Norway found when they would, the, the population had some research done on them is that they did not show any kind of wintertime depression in the, the, the elements that were thought to the extent that might be expected. Um, they found some sleep disruption because they weren't getting the sun rising and, and, and um, setting again, but there was no increase in mental distress. And they were really interested in this for this population. So they did some work. Oh, look, I'm doing it again. I'm pressing on my keyboard. It doesn't work. So this isn't trying to suggest that um, our current COVID situation isn't difficult, as I've said earlier. But... Let's think about how we as professionals can reframe it. And I don't want to overemphasize the positive psychology because we've already had sessions, a session this morning and we will again. But essentially, if you look at that second paragraph there, um, if uh, by asking people to repeat the phrase, I am excited prior to public speaking, 
reduced anxiety and led to a better overall performance for people who were finding it difficult. So if we can reframe and turn the, oh, lockdown's going to be awful, or this is awful for work, and we reframe that to I am excited, or what is the good stuff that is coming, then that might really help us. And how can we translate that into work stuff? So I would just invite you to just pop into the chat. What good stuff has COVID brought for your life? So we'll come to the work, but just briefly humor me. What good stuff has COVID brought about for you as an individual human being? More time with family, health, well-being, yeah, learning, fab. Elderly parents have embraced technology, wow. More contact than before, that's phenomenal. Slower pace, the mother in law. No, not mean, Jane, not mean. Slow down, new dog. Do you know, I'm gonna show you a slide in a minute. I couldn't resist putting a dog on because the amount of dog comments I got. More time for myself, flexible working. The dog again, flexibility. Yeah, weight loss, quite a few people are talking about being healthier at the moment. Found skills I didn't know. Tracy, that I'm interested now, what skills? Time in my garden. Yeah, absolutely. What, you know, this is really fascinating. So I'm not a scientist. Those of you who, who know me know that already. Oh, oh healthy again. Wow. Um, I think I might have taken the weight that you guys have lost and strapped it onto me because I can't stop eating biscuits. So I shall be inspired by you. All. But my very unscientific approach to exploring this concept with some people that I know was to put a post on Facebook and ask the same question of people that I know via Facebook. And I was really interested in their answers. So overall, I actually had loads and loads of comments. I'm pretty sure that it will come up as my most commented post of, of 2020 at some point in, in a Facebook reminder. But there were some huge themes to what people were saying. Along the bottom there, the people is trying to impress, uh, trying to, to pick out the theme where, it was the connection with others, whether that be a virtual connection now, or um, actually communities feeling that they were pulling together, or having a different connection with neighbours. Um, there was one example where somebody talked about how on the way to school, um, the path, a family's path had crossed with an older lady regularly over the last two years. But actually this experience of living through COVID first time round, had prompted the family to approach this lady and ask if did she need anything? Was there anything they could do to help? Which has now resulted in a relationship where once a week they take her a loaf of bread and she's baked them some cakes. I mean, how lovely is that? It's a really simple act. Um, loads of people talking about nature, um, talking about their gardens and just enjoying the space that we've got. So that little, little dude hugging the plant in the middle there was really trying to recognize that appreciation of what we do have. And actually, people were saying, I'm actually appreciating my kids more. They're annoying me a little bit less because I'm appreciating that, you know, everything that they do and seeing it through new eyes. The time angle plays into kids a lot. Lots of people were saying, um, I had a good friend of mine who commented, instead of driving past school and almost shoving the kids out while the car's still moving so that I can get on to the next thing, I'm actually taking the time to walk to school, holding their hands and talking to them. And this is a new experience. Lots of people trying something new. So for myself, I've discovered knitting. I think I might now be an extreme knitter. I'm on scarf number six. I can't do anything but scarves, but you know, I'll take, I'll take what I've got. Everybody I know is gonna get a scarf for Christmas. The idea that it is okay to slow down. So what I'm hearing from people is actually we're really blinking busy. Our working days are really hectic and yet we've got more time. So one of my friends was saying, I don't set my alarm anymore to get up, get ready, you know, choose an outfit, put on the makeup, blow dry the hair, fight through the commuter traffic because all I have to do is just make myself look presentable and go downstairs. So it's really changed the way that we operate our time. 
And I also had lots of people talking about priorities, actually what is really important. Um, and I had two examples, even just out of the people that I know on their Facebook comments, talking about how significant life changes, positive life changes has, have come about as a result of their COVID experience. So one example of somebody who is actually giving up a ridiculously well-paid job, at least in my eyes, and going back to education and doing a PhD in something that sounds really complicated. Um, so it's going to be super skint for a couple of years. Actually, what is really important and what do we value in life? So I want you to bear these things in mind as we move on to talk about the impact of this on our work and the opportunities that we have in work. So in terms of NHS Wales, Again, if you just think broadly, so we will drill down to Workforce and OD, I completely promise, but if you could just think broadly, and again, just bung into the chat, let's focus on the good stuff, because we know the bad stuff and the challenges that this has faced, that this has thrown at our feet. But what is the good stuff that has come for NHS Wales out of COVID? Is there anything? Yeah, virtual, different ways of working, less travel, yeah. A, a huge thread of the comments that I received was about um, environmental and less pollution and feeling really good about, you know, contributing less pollution through travel, etc. Increase in workforce against previous high deficits, okay. Collaborative working, yeah, it forced it, didn't it? It's taken away the option of working collaboratively and forced it. Reputation, recognition, cost savings, yeah, reduction in red tape. It's really proved what we can get done if we just crack on and do it, hasn't it? Fabulous. I wish, not for Andrea. Sorry, Andrea. So this is going to be what we spend most of our time on. The KISS acronym is what are we going to, or what should we keep? What should we improve? So actually we've started doing something, it's really good, but we need to tweak it. What should we start doing? So actually what other opportunities have you spotted for Workforce and OD that we haven't actually done yet, but there's a huge opportunity here. And what should we stop doing? So actually, is there something that we are somehow hanging on to, some sort of legacy issue that we're hanging on to, which we should let go of? Or something that COVID, that perhaps in the early days of COVID, we thought was a great idea and just as a really quick knee-jerk reaction, boom, we will just try this. And, and we haven't taken the time to really think about improving that. That's the kind of stuff that would go in there. So I hope that makes sense, that the acronym is what should we keep, what should we improve, what should we start, what should we stop, our KISS acronym. And I just want to talk a little bit about why this is a useful exercise before I put you into breakout groups. So a German university did a study which was talking, and, and, and the study actually kicked off before the current pandemic. So you can see they, they started it in December and they finished it in May. Um, earlier this year. Um, and it was looking at life satisfaction and positive mood. Um, and after the, the pandemic hit, you can imagine that their results skewed. So there was a big difference. But essentially, what is interesting here is that as in, in line with the previous research, and I know I only touched on it, I will give you the link for the article at the end here. Um, resilient people recognize potential opportunities and they learn something and we try and grow as a result of the experience. And that's what I want us to do as a workforce and OD community. What do we kiss? What do we keep, improve, start and stop? What are our opportunities? What can we learn and how can we grow as a function, as a result of this experience, which has challenged, stretched and tested us all? So in terms of keep, improve, start and stop, what I would invite people to do is you're going to be randomly assigned 
a breakout room. At the top of the screen, you will see a number on that breakout room. So if I can just ask you to quickly scribble down the matrix or um, however you want to do it, but the number against keep, improve, start, stop will align to the number of your breakout room. So what I would like you to do is in your breakout room, consider all four areas of this matrix. And the task is for a workforce and OD community, based on your collective experience, what would you write as bullet points in each of those quadrants? But the number of your breakout room is going to tell you where to start on that matrix. So start, if you are in breakout room four, start talking about the stop angle and then go to the other three. And the whole point of that is, please can you identify somebody who is just going to give us a quick verbal update of the headlines that you talked about. Um, and that gives us the opportunity to have four discussion areas and not everybody do loads and loads on number one and nobody ever get to number four. Does that make sense? Can I have a couple of nods or thumbs up if that makes? Thanks, Jane. Perfect. Thanks, Helen. So um, our lovely Helen Thomas is behind the scenes somewhere. And any minute now, you're going to go in breakout sessions. And I suggest that we actually go into these breakout sessions for 20 minutes. That gives you five minutes talking about each one. Um, and I think I'm able to pop in and out. So I'll be in at some point to listen in and see how you're getting on. Helen, is that okay? Yes. Helen, does that mean that people have gone? Sorry, I could sorry. I couldn't get my mic to work then. Yes, most people should be now in their breakout rooms. Uh, just to let you know, I think there's a um, a group of two. Claire hasn't gone anywhere yet, Claire Smith. Oh, I'm going to move Claire. Claire. Oh, Claire's gone now. She's gone. Right, Claire's I have gone now. There was, a, there was a delay on Claire. Okay, Vicky, um, because you're moderator. Which one should I pick? You should, yeah, if you go into the number four, because that was there should be three in number four and four in the other groups. Right, so I'll go in number four. And can I go in and just snout about? I can, can't can? I? Absolutely. So go into manage breakout and then you can hop around. Okay. I'm disappearing I'm right then. I've set the limit for 20 minutes. Lovely. So it'll be worth us just telling them when there's five minutes left and then they'll come back into the room. Okay. Um, Hal, I'm just going to move one person from room, room one to three because there's five and one and three in the other. Oh, right. Okay. Is you can okay? do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go for it. Thank you. There we are, perfect. Did, did you just pick them? They, they would have just dumped across, would they? <laughs> they were in one room and they're in another. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay.
Hi, are you there? Yes, I am. Are you are you okay in this session? Yeah, yeah that's true. Why? I was oh, just thinking. Was it for you? Yeah, Fee, sorry, it's me. <laughs> I couldn't see that. Yeah. Just because um, I've obviously short shortlisting these um, applications. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I didn't think you were on the session, so don't worry, Hen. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I was doing yeah, some sorry. work in the background, so that's absolutely fine. No, I'll stick okay. with this. And I can, uh, yeah, no worries, no worries, Jeff. Perfect, thanks, Hal. I've, um, I've recorded it, so if you just remember yes, to finish be. recording after, that'd be fab. I will do, my lovely. Okay, Thank thanks, Thank you. Bye-bye, bye. See bye, bye. you in a bit. Bye.
Hi, Helen. Hi, sir. Hello. So I've been in the mall. I'm guessing that they're about to dump out. Is that about right? Yeah, um, they're about to. Um, I don't know if I set it, so I can just go in and bring them back if you're ready for it. Yeah, I, I think I left it open in case. Uh, yeah, bless them. They're having this really interesting chats in there. I, I want to see them all for the whole 20 minutes. But they did break out at 20 past, didn't they? It was 14, uh, 23. Oh, is that when they, they do back? Yeah, they do um, back at 14, 43, roughly. So we've got a minute or two. Yeah, let's hang on because the chats are going on well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to? Yeah. Do you want me to put a message on five minutes? Can you put a two-minute message on? Two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thanks. Can you send it to them all in one message then? I can. Oh, how amazing! Hang on. Great stuff, isn't it? Yeah. It's just you know the more that I have had experience of it, the cleverer it is, and it is really quite straightforward. I know there are some things that you guys wish it had that it, it perhaps hasn't, but that can all be worked on, can't it? It can, it can. And we've got a list as well to go back to the developer so they can enhance it. But we've also got a new contract, so that's out to tender at the moment. So, uh, yeah, we've we've got a lot of opportunities to influence now the solution and uh, get it to where we need it to be. But it's there, it's, it's there or thereabouts, to be fair, not not too much to be done. Yeah. So when these these rooms feed back, which is really the last thing that, that happens mm -hmm. now, they feed back and we have a bit of a chit chat. So essentially, I'm going to invite the first contribution to be somebody from that breakout room. Yeah. Um, are you able to unmute them or make them live if they're not in the live group? I can, yes. Lovely. Okay. So I don't suppose, I haven't got their names though. They'd have to put their hand up. So if I get them, right, put your hand up and then Helen can enable you. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Yeah. So I give them the two minute warning. So I'll just send them a message when you're ready to say you're moving you back in. So it's not coming as a complete shock to them. <laughs> when I went in, you know, um, Fionn had just moved someone across. I went into room <laughs> one and they were all really like, someone just disappeared. Someone just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and if the connection goes, they just pop up in the main room for a minute. And then they just <laughs> move back into the room that they've been allocated. So I <laughs> Being in cyberspace, isn't it? Whoops, we're not going there. We're going to bring you here instead. <laughs> I said, don't, don't worry. They've gone into another room. Oh, we just we thought we'd done something. <laughs> <laughs> you let me know when you want me to press that button, and I'll send this message to them saying, moving you back into the main room then. Uh, 30 seconds and do it. Okay. They should be coming back in. How will I know when everybody can hear me, Helen? Is it when they stop whirling in little circles? Pretty much so, yes. Okay. Pretty much so. Ah, I can see people coming back. Yeah, we give them all a... Yeah. Hello, lovely people. How does it feel to whiz around cyberspace and be moved in and out of rooms willy-nilly? Okay, mm -hmm. I still see some people. Yeah. It's witchcraft. <laughs> I loved it when I went into room one and uh, they were still reeling from someone's just disappeared. Somebody behind the scenes here has got the power to pick you up and move you. <laughs> so I can still see some people whirling around, but for those people who've got cameras on, can you give me a little thumbs up or a nod if you can hear me? Okay, yeah. Okay, lovely. Okay. Lovely, right, let's go. So um, the rest of our session really is a bit of a, a chat about where we're, where your thinking is at with this KISS concept. So can I ask somebody from room one, the, the people who started with KEEP, 
could one of you put your hand up and then Helen's going to make sure that you are able to speak. And then if you could just run through a couple of points that you guys talked about, that would be lovely. So a hand up from someone from room one. You should also be able to unmute yourself. So when you put your hand up, there should be an option for you to unmute. Otherwise, I'll try and do it for you. But uh, it looks like you're in control there, not me. Hi, Zoe. Hiya, Zoe. Hi, uh, Zoe. Hi. So, um, yeah, we were in keep. We were the ones who did say about got freaked out when people started moving. And <laughs> there was a lot of witchcraft going on. I enjoyed um, that greatly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, we had a really good um, good discussion across the piece on on all of these, and um, certainly within the, the kind of keep area. Um, one of the areas that we were talking about was the advancement in, on, I guess, the um, more accessibility to con communicating with each other and contact to each other, checking in on each other's well being. Um, and it seems to have been more of a focus on well-being. So whilst we thought we were doing it before, were we really doing it before? Um, so it, it's sort of more valuable conversations kind of coming through um, with a cup of coffee, as well as having the, um, the business kind of conversations in, inside those meetings and times like that as well. Um, so the virtual element, doing things by virtually, so we're not traveling between meetings and meetings and rushing and heads in the clouds and trying to get from it, certainly for people in Powys, for example, where they're, the expansive um, whales that they've got to cover is phenomenal. Um, it's more quality time that they can have and, you know, can prep for, et cetera. So that's been incredibly valuable for them. Um, we did have a look at some of the other areas as well. Um, Oh, Which sorry, way? hold your horses. Hold oh, off. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so thank you so much. And, you know, the, the amount of travelling that we used to do, it almost feels like just absolutely bonkers now that we used to put ourselves through that for things that, that now just seem like, well, why would we? Um, so that would be interesting whether we do keep it. Um, yeah. Any of the other groups, did you have anything, either pop it in the chat or, or unmute yourself and add a, add a verbal comment anything that Zoe hasn't mentioned that you guys thought was important a facilitator on a course that I'm on as a learner um, has got a rule of seven so when he poses a question he counts to seven and if nobody's answered within seven seconds he assumes that there's no additional answer so I'm going to work on that basis as well more mutual respect across functions, less red tape. Yeah, I dropped into a couple of discussions where people were talking about bureaucracy and keeping the lack of bureaucracy and the, the faster pace of response. It's taking me 46 minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. Let's talk about point two. So um, what have we got or have we tried but that we really should improve so um somebody from breakout room two get us started with this hi it's Anne marie hi yeah hi so we came up with uh, four key issues i think we had a good discussion so the first one was uh, we felt we needed to improve how we approach individual health issues and the introduction of the new covid risk assessment tool is the platform for that so it's sort of maintaining that principle around individual health uh, because uh, it certainly for me opened my eyes to some quite serious health conditions in my own team which I knew nothing about I'm not saying from a confidentiality point I needed to know before but having a, an appreciation of what individuals uh, health concerns were uh, has helped the way I can support and manage them. So I think that that was um, a theme. Um, IT enablers, we had some examples where uh, equipment has been swapped in car parks overnight ju just simply because we haven't got enough to go around teams. So the importance of camera, audio, uh, laptop, uh, large screens, dual screens for those teams working across multiple systems, so we felt that was something that really needed to improve. Mm. Um, the importance of a, of a different comm strategy, because we've, we've lost what we would historically have communicated over a cup, uh, passing in the corridor, the kitchen, arriving in the car park. So those, you know, um, incidental um, types of communication. So it's how do you recapture those in teams? 
Mm. Um, and then the fourth and final one was um, how do we improve the support we might give our workforce in managing that transition time with increased homeworking? There, there were examples of some individuals who felt that, um, you know, if you're working off your laptop in the kitchen and you just log off and then start tea uh, in the same clothes without the drive home, yeah. there was a real issue around switching off. Mm. Um, and whilst there are lots of examples where people have welcomed that in that there isn't a long come out, there's a lot of people that cite, you know, the time when I think is on my drive home or yeah. my drive in or that's when I wind down or... So I think those were the four key ones that we came up with in terms of improve. Thank you so much. Another batch of, of really valid points. And for those people who were in Dr. Rachel's workshop this morning, she actually referenced that transition between work and home life. And she was talking about maybe just taking a, a quick walk around the block or having a shower or changing clothes or doing something to mark that transition being a real positive step psychologically. Fascinating. Thank you. Um, group three, get us started with what do you think we should start doing? I'm looking for somebody unmuting themselves. Group three. Can anyone remember who was in group three from the admin side? Yeah. Oh, Tracy. Oh, Andrea, lovely. Um, yeah, I think Sophie wrote down most of our notes, but I will try and remember what we talked about. And maybe if some of the group can chip in, if, I, if I've forgotten anything. Um, we, we talked about starting again. So starting not to go back to what we were doing, if that makes any sense. Starting a new plan to go forward. Okay, yeah. Um, that was one of the things we talked about. Um, Sophie, can you remember what else we talked about? Was it No, was it Sophie in our group? I think, Andrew, it, when we said started again, but also bringing back some of those things that we did before. Yes, Moving them together, you know, having yeah, the old them. new. So is that like a restart? Is, so actually some of the stuff that has been discarded in the co sudden COVID changes is actually some of that stuff was good. So bring yeah. it back. Yeah. OK, got it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it was a kind of like, well, you know, what? what I, I guess it's a, a it's kind of goes in with a start and stop. But but, you know, starting again, if something that we were doing was working well, then we should be continuing it. And if it wasn't, well, how can we how can we restart that to, to put us on another path? Got it. OK. Yeah. And were there any other bullet points from your group? Andrea, I, I, bless your heart. It feels like you're on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, help me out here. I didn't write, I didn't write everything down. I've I've got another bullet point. This is Sophie speaking. Hi, Sophie. I I got another book bullet point was just um to start looking out for our own health and well being. Okay, and is that building on the point that was made earlier that sometimes that transition between work and home can get a bit blurry? Yeah, like we did discuss about um sort of logging into um logging into do your work. But having that routine where you do stop and don't just carry on just because you can, because you're at home and it's there and it's tempting. Yeah. Um, just to be a bit more maybe strict, start being strict on yourself, like giving, making sure that you give yourself breaks um, and a bit more of a structure, which is obviously difficult when you're working from home. But if you work in your kitchen, like yeah. remove yourself from that area to, to try and start not having that sort of temptation there to to keep going yeah making the effort to actually put the computer away close it and put it in the bag maybe rather than just yeah the side yeah absolutely. yeah that's it thank you so much group three um and definitely not least but the last to feedback any bullet points from the group that started with stop group four I'm happy to talk. Are you happy for me to talk? My group? Yeah, go on, Claire. It's fine. Anything I've forgotten, let me know. So stop. Uh, we wanted to stop reacting and move to responding. 
Okay, can you give us a bullet of what's different between those two? So um, it was, it's, it's been very, very fast paced and decisions have been made at pace. And there's some really good things that have come out of that, you know, cross boundary working, working across professional boundaries. But I think um, with that comes the loss of time to make really measured decision making. Yeah. And how to reflect. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So maybe just a pause. Less okay. transactional, if you know what I mean. Got it. Yeah. Um, and I know this is within all our gift, but the back to back meetings on Skype, and I know that's in our control, but we mark that as something we wanted to stop. Mm -hmm. And then the judging. Uh, and what we meant by that was sort of twofold. Judging yourself, if you're not at your desk, if you're not at your kitchen table from nine to five. Yeah. Also, not judging others if they're not at their kitchen table from nine to five. So that if, if it suits you to make emails, send emails at 8 p.m. because you've done the children's school run, then that just an unconditional... We all have to work differently and we should all be um, understanding of that and trusting. Okay. There was one final one, and this was just a throwaway. Stop the inflated puppy prices. <laughs> yeah, well, based on the number of dog-related comments I've received as part of my um, unscientific research for this, I would think that there'd be many people who would agree with you. Agree, we all work differently. Yeah. So, just an anecdote my husband, um, he actually works part time. So, his contract is for 30 hours a week. And he split his day into four three hour um, sessions. And he, to achieve his 30 hours, he has to work 10 of those per week. And so, actually, he's got a system where he might work 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., and that's a session. And then he might have the middle of the day off and not work again until 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., uh, which is the second session for that day. But in the middle of the day, he's managed to run some errands or something. Now, he works in finance, so he's got the ability to do that, given the nature of his work. But it is an interesting concept that mm. it doesn't matter so much now where we work, um, it's it's actually our productivity and, and what we are achieving and our outputs. So does the same apply to when we work? I know there will be some core meetings that we have to attend and things that we must contribute to at particular times of day. But actually outside of those, if you're an early bird or a night owl, is that okay? And that's something for, for us as a workforce and OD function. And also something for us to perhaps advise other managers in relation to where they're worrying about that in terms of their own teams. I'm so grateful to you all for, for throwing yourselves into that discussion. And essentially, I just remind you that this was in relation to we the most resilient participants in this study. So let's think of ourselves as a function. If we are to be a resilient workforce and OD function, then we need to be looking for the potential opportunities, we need to be learning, and we need to grow as a function as a result of our COVID experience. So the whole point of this is, have you heard something that actually you would write on your to-do list? I must keep doing, we must improve. Why don't we start something? And it's really important that we stop doing this other thing. And what would you do with that to-do list? Who do you now go and speak to? Who do you pick those ideas up with? Is it your line manager? Is it your director? Actually, is there something here that you're supporting an area and actually I need to go and have a chat with them or I'm going to approach something a little bit differently as a result of this? So the whole point of this discussion is really to get you thinking and have you got a couple of ideas that you think are worth exploring now that you could take back to the workplace and poke about at and try, even if it's just with your own team in the first instance. So I hope that that has generated a little bit of thinking and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to come back to Workforce and OD and run this session. As I say, I left earlier this year and I miss you all greatly. So for those colleagues I've worked with before, it's absolutely delicious to see you again. And for those I haven't worked with before, thank you so much for, for um, coming into this session and allowing me to spend an hour with you. Um, 
you can see my email address there. So if you're interested or you just want to throw some ideas around, um, I'm always up for a chat or a bit of an email exchange. And the fundamental sort of concept for, for having this kind of chat today came from a Guardian article, as I said. So if you just Google Guardian and um, think like a Norwegian, or if like me, I can't spell Norwegian, but there it is on screen. So Guardian, think like a Norwegian, and you get that article. And I, for me, it's not a long article. It was super interesting. And I think it's worth a read because they might be onto something. I hope that's okay for today. I'm going to hand back to Vicky as our session host. Vicky, I've probably given you 30 seconds of time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, that's okay. That's fine. No, thanks for that, Sue. It's really, really good. And, and like I said, it is really thought provoking. Um, I believe we have a break now um, until quarter past three, um, where we'll speak, have the keynote speaker then for Alice Beveridge, Resilience in the Face of Adversity. So time to grab yourself a cuppa. Um, and then if you can log into that session then at quarter past three. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you.